So, Namaste, Konnichiwa, Bonjour, Ni Hao, Swatika, Warakam, Slam Walekum, Ciao, Ola, Privet, and a very warm welcome to our global Ikebana family. A special welcome to Madam Chikage Suzuki, wife of the Ambassador of Japan to India, and Madam Miho Okawara, President Ikebana International Tokyo Headquarters. I'd like to begin today's session with a quote on hope from Nikki Barnett. If there is only one thing that you were to carry throughout your life, let it be hope. Let it be hope that good times are always ahead. Let it be hope that you would sail through the roughest times because during these times, it would be hope alone that would carry you through. And the news of the vaccine has instilled in all of us new hope for a better tomorrow, a brighter tomorrow, and a more normal tomorrow. Like Roy Bennett once said, never lose hope. Storms make people stronger and never last forever. And this pandemic is a live example that no matter we were restricted and confined, we still found time and space to bloom. Delhi Ikebana International is very happy to present to you the creative work of Alexander Ivan from Australia. Alexander Ivan is a very innovative and a talented Ikebana teacher from the Sugetsu School, who believes that limited material can be restricting, but it gives birth to innovation and creativity. For his demonstration today, he would be focusing on arrangements much suited for the domestic environment, using materials which are up close at hand. Once the presentation is over, you are most welcome to ask him any questions you would have. At the end of the demonstration, the vote of thanks would be delivered by Mrs. Pratibha Khanna, our membership chairperson. I now would like to call Miho San to please say a few words. Hello, everyone. Uh, I've already been to your sessions many times, and so you don't know, you don't have to know my name, and uh, and uh, maybe I have to pay some membership fee to the the daily chapter, I think. But anyhow, I I'm, I'm not doing any kind of boring present message today, and uh, just I'd like to say. Uh, thank you so much to Nina Tham uh, for uh, organizing organizing this session today, and I also I'd like to uh, show my uh, sincere gratitude uh, to uh, Alexander Evans Sons for accepting this uh, opportunity as a demonstrator, and and I'd like you uh, to say thank you to all the members uh, here in Ikebana International to for your contribution to Ikebana International. And uh, lastly, one thing, I'd like to uh, invite you to the, the headquarters New Year gathering sessions to be held on 5th February online. So I'd like you to join in and uh, enjoy and uh, celebrate the, the New Year uh, in 2021. That's it. Thank you very much. And I am so looking forward to see that, that demonstration today. Thank you so much. Hello, and welcome to my studio. I'm Alexander Evans, and today I'm going to be doing some demonstrating for you. But before I do that, I would like to thank Ikebana International Delhi Branch and Nino Verma for inviting me to demonstrate for you today. Um, I was thinking, given the times that we are in, it would be a nice idea to demonstrate a number of things which uh, you can experience in your home. Uh, most of us are in various forms of either lockdown or restricted movement, uh, and so it's good to be able to do things and create things that you can have either close to home or, or at home. So uh, the first arrangement I thought I would do 
is in a small bowl. Uh, the sort of bowl that you might use for rice or for ramen or noodles of some kind. Um, so something that most people will easily have to hand. Um, following that, I'll do a table arrangement and then uh, I'll do an arrangement that would suit uh, a narrow but tall space because often in our homes we might have a little bit of room on a bench top and space up here but not much space that way. So hence a tall narrow arrangement. Anyway, first of all, our bowl arrangement. So today I'm using this lovely bowl made by my friend her local potter called Susan Hill from Hillgrove Pottery. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll be working with that today. Uh, because of the lovely purples and blues and all those colors in the bowl, I'll be focusing on that in the material. So I have some irises and some ceanothus and some green uh, spider um, chrysanthemums. So I've started by putting a little bit of uh, pebbles in the bottom of the bowl already, because I want to be able to have my kenzone slightly off center. Uh, so this allows it to sit slightly to one side. And the other thing with a bowl is the material has to stand based on the Kenzan only um, because it's not really going to be touching the sides so much. You don't have that extra um, help from the container in that regard. So it's kind of like doing an arrangement in a suibang. Uh, so to make sure that it's not going to fall forwards or to the side, I'm also going to add a second Kenzan as a counterweight to the back of my first Kenzan. Push that right down so that it's going to keep everything from moving around too much. Now, the next thing I do is, of course, add some water so that when I cut my flowers, they're going straight into some water. Uh, and I just want to go really to the top of the spikes of the Kenzan. Uh, I can always top it up a little bit more after, um, but that means I can get in there and work without splashing water around everywhere. So, I'm going to begin with my Ceanothus. Uh, this is actually slightly heavy material, uh, so I want to reduce the weight of it a little bit and reveal this lovely line because I kind of want to go slightly sideways. Um, so I'm going to take off a few of these in-between parts. And maybe this one also. It seems a bit of a shame because it's so lovely, this material, but um, it's necessary to sometimes uh, edit our natural materials. So I'm going to put that oh, cut a little bit in water here. I did pre-prepare a little, so some of my material is already pre-cut, ready to go, um, just in order to save time. So in any case, I'm going to start that here holding my Kenzan so it doesn't move around on the gravel too much. I'm tilting it slightly forward and down. Yes, so that's in a nice position. Um, and I'm going to have a little to the front and then I'm going to add my irises. Ceanothus is a material that we have to be a little bit careful with um, because the flowers are compound flowers and they tend to shed a lot of their material. So it's important that we, um, when we cut them uh, and prepare them, we give them a little bit of a shake to get rid of all of that excess material that might be ready to fall. Um, I don't want to go too high. I'm going to keep this line as my main line because it's such a lovely, lovely line. So I just want three irises. I'm going to keep them quite short. Typically in Sogetsukabana, we have a very specific way in which we use irises. But um, today, this is more of a freestyle arrangement. So I'm just going to be quite uh, unconventional, I suppose, in how I use them. Again, you can see I'm keeping very short with this material. One final. Now 
And even though the second and third flowers are very close in height, because the third flower is somewhat more closed, it still feels like a subordinate flower rather than uh, competing. Uh, so we're almost there. I just want to fill out the back a little. gives us some extension, make sure it feels like a nice three-dimensional feeling arrangement. And one pop of colour is going to be a uh, spider chrysanthemum. So these are just stunning and as you can see with the purple blue they really create a vibrant focal point. So again I want it very short and that's going to sit just in this centre position here. So I'll be cutting most of that length off. Finding the face of the flower. It's become a little bit hidden behind that iris, so I'll just go slightly to the side of where I initially thought. the viewer. One other little bit of material I wanted to add just to break up the, the texture and solidness of this um, uh, Ceanothus and the iris because they're so close in colour is this um, Coastal Westringia, West um, which is called Coastal Rosemary in Australia, uh, even though I don't think we use it for cooking. Um, but it's quite lovely and delicate and in a sense gives a sense of freedom and wildness, which is really quite sweet. And that's our arrangement in a bowl. It's quite full feeling, but that's sort of a nice thing when you're uh, experiencing difficult times to have this sense of abundance, at least in our flowers. This next demonstration is uh, table demons, uh, table arrangement demonstration. Um, when we're in the domestic environment, again, uh, sometimes people don't have a big square table or if they're serving a whole family, there might not be a lot of space left on their table. So I wanted to do an arrangement which is kind of long and narrow, but low, because uh, often people have a longer table rather than a square table. So I have made some boxes which I made for a different purpose, but they also suit the table uh, purpose. These ones can actually um, go vertically or they can go horizontally. So in this case, we're using it horizontally. So we're gonna have it here and we're only gonna use sort of a minimum amount of material. So uh, for our water source, we've got a small glass container which slides inside and in there is a Kenzan. Uh, we might not really need it very much, but it adds some stability. Also, because the glass is textured, our Kenzan is not very visible and it's going inside this box so it'll sit below the, uh, the lip of the container so that we won't notice it. So I'll put some water in there before I put it in to my wooden box and it'll just slide in from the end. Don't need a huge amount because I'm not using a huge amount of material in this arrangement.
And as you can see, you can't see the Kenzan hardly at all. And as soon as we put our floral material in, you won't notice it. So uh, I thought um, when we're having a table arrangement, we don't want something too tall because then people can't see each other and converse and uh, it becomes sort of an impediment to having a nice um, conversation or um, feeling of connection at the dinner table. So I thought, well, I'll use anthuriums because they've got a nice flexible stem, which I will bend slightly. And the other neat thing about anthuriums is they don't have a strong aroma. So when we're doing an arrangement for a dining table, um, you don't want to be competing with the smells of the food. Um, and also you don't want such a strong smell that it might um, upset people or cause them an allergy reaction or, um, or any of that sort of thing. So it's important for, for a table arrangement to use materials that don't have a strong smell. So a little bit of perfume is okay, but you wouldn't say, for instance, use some of the versions of lilies, which have a very strong aroma, uh, or strong perfume, I should say, because um, you don't want to compete with your meal. So that's a nice length. And I'm just gonna cut a little bit at the bottom. second one. So this one we're going to use shorter and we want it to sort of sit just roughly here. So I don't need all of this length. The trick to bending soft stemmed material is to just ever so slightly crush the fibers on the one side that you're going to bend towards. So don't have to crush them fully, not in the same way as you would with something heavier, um, but just gently running your finger along the back of the material there. And that will give us a bit of flexibility. Uh, if you want a strong fold, you can use your fingernail and just put a little crease and it'll get, allow you to bend in that way which is what I want. And the third flower, just sort of to the back because on a table arrangement, it's got to work in 360 degrees because everybody wants to be able to enjoy it together. This will also help continue this line and give us that sense of depth and three dimensionality. And again, I want some bend. So I've got to very gently work on my material. Always supporting where you're doing the um, manipulating of the material, because if you don't support it, you're more likely to break it. I find this quite meditative. I kind of go off into my own little world while I'm manipulating my material and I, I experience uh, through my fingers uh, so that I'm in touch with what's happening with the material and I'm less likely to cause it a problem. Now I do want a bend. Okay, so that's our principal flowers in place. Now we want to, that's beautiful as it is, but we want a, a little bit more. <laughs> so I'm going to add some flax. Um, this is a lovely bronze, which picks up on the same colors in the stems of the anthuriums, and uh, we can split it and do various things with it. So I don't want too much of the end. And even though it's flat, so I'm going to trim it in water. I want to incorporate this opening in the front of the container. So I'm going to go in here and then create some loops.
Now this end of the material is a little dry looking, so I'm going to take that off. Flax can be quite springy. challenge when working in such a small space is getting things to stay where you want them and, uh, and to do what you want. So I'm going to put a little split here so that I can feed my material back through and it will in effect stabilize itself. There we go. Again, I don't want the um, dried off end, so I'm going to trim that and put something going this way. And now just to soften this area here, I'm going to add some fluffy material. I'm not quite sure exactly what this is called. I got it from my uh, florist wholesaler just the other day. And I think it's a lovely uh, counterpoint to the sculptural forms that we have here. So I'm going to just add a little bit of this. So there we have a really elegant um, arrangement for a dinner table. Um, it's not got too much material, so it's easy to get all of the things that you might need for it. Um, and it will sit comfortably and neatly uh, in the centre of a long table.
This next arrangement is intended for a domestic environment where you might not have a large amount of uh, width in your display space. So you might have height because of a higher ceiling or you might be able to put it someplace down low but just not have a lot of width. So the idea is that um, this is a great arrangement for when you're feeling the squeeze. Um, I'm starting with this lovely container which I've prepared in advance and I've put a crossbar into the top here because it's got a straight section here so I could put a crossbar in. Now I'm going to start with um, just some goma and some flax. Now I've put one sticky dot here to hold the two together because I want them to work as a pair. So they're just going to sit like that. Now I've um, also uh, kept them a little bit shorter than I might. We could go taller, um, but in this case I've decided uh, it would be good for them to still fit in the shot with me. Um, so the feature flower that I want to use is this beautiful um, King Protea. So it's a lovely dusty pink and Australian native flower. And I've removed quite a few of these leaves, uh, mostly because they will draw the water away from feeding the flower. And not only that, but the leaves will also deteriorate faster than the flower. So I didn't want to have too many of them. Still some is nice, but uh, not too many. So I'll just take off one or two more. And then that can go here. All right. So now the second flower I'm going to use will be this one. So I want this to come out here. Um, so I might have to do a little creative bending. So with this, because it's a woody stem, I twist to separate the fibers. And what I want to do is create it so it's going to sit and do this. So hopefully that will work. exactly as I intended, but I'm not unhappy with the result there. So let's see if I can get that a bit better. As I said, not exactly as intended, but that's the way things are in Ikebana. Sometimes the material just wants to do its own thing and that's okay. Uh, so next I found some amazing kangaroo foil. This is remarkable in that it's got this lovely mauve and and uh, soft green colors going on and i really really just thought that was something quite unusual that people may not have had an opportunity to see before so i thought i'd like to use that today now i want this sort of here so i'm going to trim it a little and then in water Shorter still. Another one or two. Creates this lovely soft kind of uh, latticey framework for us to enjoy. And lucky for me, as I had a bit more material, it's giving me the opportunity to bring this flower higher up, which was where I wanted it. So that makes me quite happy. Uh, don't want it quite so much there.
and one more shortish. It really is such a remarkable colour, I just I couldn't help but use it. It was quite, uh, quite striking to me. So the other thing I want to do is echo that uh, beautiful colour just up here, very, very high, as, almost as if there's nothing else behind here. So I'm just going to trim off most of the side material other than just at the top here because this will help us draw attention to the verticality of the arrangement. Maybe just one more to add a bit more focus up here. Now, uh, just to fill out a fraction more, a little bit of my favourite, once again, the um, lovely wax flower, just to create some softness and to blend in with our uh, King Protea. Wax flour is great to use because it's very uh, long lasting uh, and quite weak. It will tend to drop its little leaves every now and then. Uh, so you just need to give a little bit of tidying and cleaning around uh, as, as the arrangement carries on in time. Um, but usually it's pretty good. One or two more small pieces. And then just to um, pick up on the, the flax and the gomea lily leaf that I've got going on there, and to also echo this lovely round form with these round forms, I'm going to create some loops at the bottom uh, to obscure the edge of the container, but also to utilise my gomea lily. Now this I have run through a pasta machine on an angle and then uh, held it in front of a hairdryer to open out 
the fibers. So it creates this lovely lattice and uh, meshy kind of effect. So you can then sort of roll it up and create all kinds of interesting shapes, whatever you might like. Uh, and you can just secure it with a simple staple. And so long as your ends are in water, it should uh, keep itself nice and fresh for quite a while. And in any case, Gymea lily will retain its freshness very effectively for quite a long time in any case. One or two more. That first loop I created with Gymea Lily, it also works with flax. So picking up again on all the materials that I've been using throughout, um, just wanting to carry the theme of my materials throughout the entire arrangement and unify things. The other neat thing about this technique is uh, this material will dry happily and retain its form and then you can uh, continue to use it, you can paint it, you can do all sorts of things with it and it's really quite versatile, it's great for giving a sense of volume um, and it really I think can enhance your work and add to those sort of spaces in your arrangement where you want to fill things out a little without necessarily creating a sense of heaviness. Right, so that is an arrangement that's nice and tall. Um, it's not too wide. It will sit happily in a fairly narrow space and um, you can enjoy it for as long as you like. Thank you very much. The next arrangement I'm going to do is a very, very simple arrangement. Uh, sometimes you might only have access to a very small garden or you might have no garden at all. You might be reliant on what you can grow on a balcony if you live in an apartment. Um, so I wanted to do something which just has one very special flower. In this case, I'm going to use a king protea, um, but if it could just as easily be a particularly nice rose or uh, any kind of flower that's a bit showy, but you might just get only one. Um, I'm gonna work also in glass. So I've got this lovely container, which is a Costa Boda container. Um, it's quite heavy, uh, but it's got this lovely color to the inner part of the glass. Um, so I'm gonna work in that, because I really, really love it. Um, and we'll go from there. So starting with that. Uh, the thing about working in glass is you don't want to see a whole bunch of stems. So my first step is always, always to put something in the container that's going to hide any stems I might have. So in this case, I'm going to use flax again. It's one of my go-to materials. I really, really find it very handy. Um, and I'm going to cut the bottom of it so that it matches the shape at the bottom of the, um, the visible part of the container. So I just hold my hand behind it so that you can see. So I want to cut it so it's sort of that curvy shape at the bottom. And that way it should be sympathetic with the container rather than competing with it. And I'm happy with that. So, 
that gives us a leaf, a linear element. Um, and again, as I said, it's just flax, so it's really easy to get. Um, it's, it grows just about everywhere. Um, and it gives us a nice way of keeping any of our stems hidden. Oh, I've filled that a little full, so I'll just take a bit out. This is a king protea. It's a beautiful, beautiful flower, um, very showy, uh, quite large. And uh, I'm just going to work with that one quite low here. Uh, I'm going to take off quite a bit of its foliage. I'm not going to take off all, but quite a bit. feel like it creates a sort of an interesting kind of windmill sort of feeling um, which I quite like so I don't want all that stem because I want it to sit fairly close to the top of the container so I can cut it really really rather short um, now I'm cutting it also on the angle to which I want it to rest against the inner wall of the container now even though this is a very small container it's still important because that gives us the, the direction the flower is going to go um, and allows it to sit how we want. So I can go shorter again. Because that's how I want it. Very, very low. So I do like having this long uh, vertical element. Um, but what I might do is split that down, keeping one piece tall, and then just bringing another, the secondary piece down and through so that we get this nice relationship between our um, protea and the flax. And that is, well, a little straight so we can fix that because while straight is good in some things we don't want to form a direct cross so uh, I want to just take this through and make sure it goes on a slight angle the neat thing about protea is it's sort of got scales almost the petals form this interlocking pattern and that gives you an opportunity to um, cunningly sit things into those um, those spaces uh, where you might not otherwise do so so that creates a much more dynamic feel um, and that's really it just one flower one piece of flax Something that I find uh, a bit of a challenge and an interesting one is that uh, occasionally we run into materials which has got a very, very fine stem and uh, accommodating that in an arrangement can be quite challenging because oftentimes our Kenzans are, uh, have the needles spaced sufficiently far apart that a fine stemmed material is difficult to get in place. This is where some kind of support structure comes in very, very handy. Um, now, we see support structures out there in uh, Ikebana land and often they're made out of steel or um, they're, they're professionally constructed in some way. Uh, and this, this is um, awesome, but also not cheap and difficult to get hold of sometimes. So I found out there is a way of creating a structure which you can use straws, paper straws, and uh, forest wire, as we often use in a cabana, and uh, it 
can produce something that is really uh, worthwhile and useful and uh, it allows you to have a structure in which to place um, your materials that have got very fine stems. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate with the structure that I've made. Um, I'll just grab it. This is the structure. So you can see it's lots of uh, straight lines and uh, I've painted this one in a sort of uh, metallic rose gold with a little bit of yellow gold in there to just make it not too monochromatic. Um, and uh, I'm going to incorporate this into an arrangement. Uh, later on, I'll be doing a uh, workshop type demonstration as to how to make these. So um, stick around. To start with though, I'm going to begin with this triangular container, which is a very standard Sogetsu container that we use. I'm not sure if other schools use the same container, but um, certainly we do in, in Sogetsu school. Um, now this has a Kenzan in it, not that that's uh, going to be particularly helpful to see that. There we go, and go. there's a structure sitting right on top of it there, but that's not such an interesting position. That's a much more interesting position. So we're going to go with that. Um, and it gives us opportunities to, um, to put our material through these different spaces that we have. Ideally, it's good if it's not touching the ground. So in this case, because it's got wire inside, I can just bend and it's now not touching the ground. And there we go. Um, so I'm going to start with some spirea, uh, which is a gorgeous material, very delicate and fine and super duper pretty. It's just got these lovely fine little white flowers. Um, I have heard it referred to as may bush, but I've never referred to it as maybush. Um, that might be a little old-fashioned thing, or maybe I'm just uninformed. Um, anyway, so I call uh, this is spirea, and um, oh, some water into our container first. Now it's important that um, because our structure is made of straws uh, and paper straws at that, that it doesn't actually go into the water itself. So it's just sitting around the outside of the container. If you need to secure it in a different way, you can always attach it to um, another piece of uh, wire or wood uh, that can then go inside the container. Um, but in this case, we want to keep it as much outside as possible. Um, the, uh, the Kenzan is really only just stopping things from sliding around too much. And I'm going to just be quite... Um, random in how I place a lot of these things because I just want that lovely sense of wildness and freedom that we get with these sort of soft finely stemmed flowers. And make use of the support that I can have from the structure itself. Another thing I do want is a little bit of green. So I'm going to bring that in over here um, and I'm going to put it through this side of the structure. So that will help to make sure it stays in place. Um, this is a bit more fluffy than is needed. So I'm going to trim that. Like so. I'm going to go through there and into the container. And this is the joy of wearing a long necklace, is it likes to enjoy being part of the arrangement. <laughs> okay, so I don't need it that long. I'm going to trim the top off. That's better. Okay, so starting to create some interesting things. Spirea will shed a little bit of its petals as you're working. Don't be too worried about that. Um, it, it will uh, 
be okay. I've got this lovely long piece, which I do want to include over here. Although I think these parts are going to need to come off in order to get it into the structure. But I will keep them aside so that I can use them later. this side so it's unifying the arrangement and now I want to add some pops of color not too much of this green although a little bit is quite nice uh, so I've got this material which is Ixia and it does this amazing thing where it changes colour as it gets older, and the longer it's been in bloom, the, the colour changes. Um, and it becomes this really, really vibrant, amazing material. As you can see though, very fine stem, quite grass-like. Um, so having a structure to support it is very handy. This has all come from the same patch of the garden, so even though it's all very close together, growing as good friends and neighbours, um, it's, it's all different colours. So this material makes for a really beautifully vibrant kind of arrangement. Um, so really joyful. Uh, which again is in these current times is a nice uh, a nice change perhaps from what we might be experiencing commonly. Again, bring a little pop of colour back down over this side so that it unifies the arrangement um, and makes it all feel part of the same thing. Maybe one or two more. love this colour. It's so stunning. And as I said, this all is growing in the one spot in the garden. So it's quite miraculous how it's all such different colours. Uh, I don't think we got different sort of different seeds. They all came from the one supplier. And uh, yeah, it's just produced all this amazing variety. So Nature is once again surprising and gorgeous and wonderful. Uh, 
and I think I want to put something just in a bit here. So, a couple more. So fine stemmed material is just as appropriate to work with in a cabana as things which are uh, more sturdy um, and it's, it's all fine. So you can really find the thing that brings you the most joy and uh, explore ways to work with that. This also will continue to open as it's uh, in your container. So you just pluck off the older flowers and allow the ones as they come closer to the end to continue to open. So there we have a beautiful arrangement. It's got a support structure that uses an unconventional material that's easy to acquire and not too expensive and is very flexible. Uh, and it uh, incorporates beautiful color and fine stemmed material that you can enjoy, even though the base of that material might not fit into your Kenzine easily. So that concludes my demonstrations for you for today. I hope you've enjoyed what I've had to show you and I look forward to possibly bringing you some further demonstrations or workshops in the future. My thanks once again to Ikebana International Delhi Branch and to Nina Verma for the invitation to come and demonstrate for you today. Uh, I hope until next time you stay well, healthy and safe. Thank you. So hello everyone and thank you for um, uh, for enjoying the demonstration. I hope you found it uh, illuminating and in these difficult and challenging times. Um, and I'm happy to Later. answer questions if anyone might uh, wish to ask me anything about the materials or the arrangements or uh, anything that I've uh, created in the demonstration. Uh, I, I really enjoyed uh, the opportunity and I wanted to also thank uh, Nina Verma for inviting me uh, on behalf of Ikebana International Delhi Branch and also to the international president Miho Okolara. So very great thank yous uh, for making me feel so welcome uh, and for inviting me to uh, share my Ikebana arrangements with you. I'm Namita Suresh from um, Ikebana International Bangalore chapter. We just enjoyed your super duper arrangements and we are grateful to the Delhi branch for arranging this for us. Thank you so much.
On behalf of Pratibha Khanna, I guess I like to say thank you to everybody. Maybe um, we have internet or some problem is there in trying to get in touch with her. But we'd really like to thank everybody from all over the world to who has joined us today. And thank you so very much for being part of our program. Thank you and namaste until next time. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.